This is part two of this tech lesson. If you haven't seen part one, you can click anywhere on the screen. In part one, I show how to take the covers off the bike and prep them for powder coating. At the end of part one, I had just finished cleaning these parts after preheating them in the oven. So you want to clip the ground wire to the part that you're spraying. And to activate the charge on the part, just push down the button on the powder coating system. When you have the button pushed down, make sure not to touch the part or the rack or you'll get shocked. When you're spraying, hold the gun about 4-6 to six inches away from the part. Try to spray the part from every angle possible. If you miss just one little part, it'll be pretty noticeable. With powder coating, you don't have to worry about drooling at all. So you can just spray as much powder on as you want. There is a limit though. You don't want to spray too much or else the coating will be really thick. Just the thin coat is still very strong though. Once all the parts are sprayed, carefully place them in the oven. And for this powder, we're going to bake it at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Most powders require a different temperature and duration, so make sure to check your packaging for the right temp. Once the 15 minutes is up, you can take the parts out using welding gloves or something similar. And then set the parts down and once they're cool to the touch, they can be installed and used. If you notice a spot where you miss when you're spraying, you can respray the part and bake it again. On these covers, we're going to follow the same procedure. So we're just going to wipe the parts down, preheat them, let them cool a little bit, wipe them down again, and spray them. On these covers there's a lot more tight areas so take your time spraying. As you move from one part to the next make sure to move the ground wire to the next part. Then we can carefully place the parts in the oven and let them bake. Once the parts are out of the oven, check them over and make sure you didn't miss any powder. On these covers I thought I'd try changing the color of the lettering. So I dumped powder over the lettering and then carefully wiped all the excess powder away. Make sure you wipe off any unwanted powder off the cover or else when you bake it you'll be able to see it. So once you've got the lettering how you want it, place it in the oven and bake it for a few minutes until the powder flows out. Another thing I wanted to try was powder coating letters or numbers onto the cover. So I just printed out the numbers I wanted onto a sheet of paper and cut them out with a small knife. After that I laid a piece of tape down on the cover where I wanted the numbers and traced each number onto the cover through the tape. After the numbers were cut out, I masked off the cover a little bit more and laid down powder over the numbers. After baking the powder and removing the masking tape, the cover is done and ready to install. I liked how the Honda lettering turned out, but I wasn't a big fan of the numbers, mostly because of the color. If I would have used a different color, I think it would have turned out better. But overall, I think the covers turned out pretty good. Now with all the powder coating done, we can reinstall all the plugs, seals, and gaskets that we removed earlier. Be sure to apply oil to all the seals and o-rings that you install.
Now it's time to reinstall all the covers on the bike. You can reuse the seals and o-rings if they're still in good shape and not torn. On the stator cover gasket, you'll have to replace that since those tear very easily. I like to put a little oil on the gasket surfaces when I'm installing a new gasket. That way, if I have to take the cover back off, the gasket won't stick to the case or the cover and possibly rip. All the cover bolts don't need to be too tight, only about 8 to 10 foot pounds. Once the valve cover is on and tightened, we can put the spark plug cap back on and install the breather hose. Next, we can install the gas tank. Clip on the fuel hose and then plug in the fuel pump wire. Then we can install the safety cord. If you have an hour meter, install that next along with the gas tank bolt and strap. The four gas tank shroud bolts can then be put on. After that, we can install the seat and add oil. On the engine side, just add oil until the dipstick shows at the full mark. The capacity of the transmission side will say right on the cover. You can double check the oil level by taking the overflow bolt out and making sure a little bit of oil comes out. After you run the motor for a few minutes, check the engine side oil again and you might have to add a little bit more. After you're done adding oil, that's it for this project. Thanks for watching this tech lesson. If you haven't seen all the previous ones I've done, links are in the description below. And stay tuned because I got a lot more of these planned.